can go. Take a little tour. Take a little tour. That's just nice. I don't care who you are. I just wanted to show you the back of the barn. Countryside. This is a great place to make music. It's just the best. You can't make music in a city. You have to be in the country. At least I do. Oh, got a beautiful gift from Sweden. So excited to open this. Got a gift from Big Matt. Check out my video from Big Matt. I'll put a link to it. And then this, I don't know what this is, but stoked to open that. Got a lot to do and not a lot of time to do it. Gotta fix this base, it's all screwed up. I gotta get ready for my first live stream ever. Just crap, crap. Um, oh. What is, what is it? Oh, goodness. A list of all the service stations. Thank you so much. So great. I have a Tascam 388, but no original physical manual. He gave me one. That's really, really generous, really, really nice. And it's so great to have a, a tangible thing like this. And these these manuals from Tascam, these are like, you know, works of art. They, they really break down how the machine works. A schematic here, DBX PCB assembly. I mean, this is really nuanced. Symptoms and how to fix them. Really need to understand how the machine works. Uh, killed an ant. That's awesome. Thank you, Marco. From Big Matt. Big Matt is a reel-to-reel -reel expert. Check out our video on how to fix your Tascam 388 or any type of cassette recorder. Whoa. Oh my god. TDX tape. Soup. Oh, this is awesome. Whole bunch of quarter-inch reel-to-reel -reel tapes. That is a really, really nice and generous gift. I'm so stoked because I've only ever used one tape on my Tascam 388, and that is the Record the Masters tape that everyone's using nowadays. I know that there's sticky, sticky shed syndrome and stuff, so obviously I'm, I'll do my research. This is just, this is just dope. Making tight, noise-free splices. Whoa, it breaks down how to splice a tape. So, Reverb.com gave me a credit of $25. There's nothing you can buy with $25 besides guitar picks, and that's boring. So I finally decided, why don't I just buy another snare stand and put my tom on there, so we'll have two toms, and then I can do like a stereo cross thing, and so that's what this is. A snare stand that I'm gonna use as a tom stand, $25. Organized, looks a little bit better. Pedals. Okay, it's like tolerable, I can get started. I made a video where I talked about how the way I like to mic drums, if I only have four mics, is to use kick snare and then overheads. But the way I do my overheads is not your traditional just left, right. I like to put them on an angle. If you do that and you put your crashes in the center, then you get like even smooth sounding crashes. And if you line them up with your toms, your toms really go left, right. So your kick and your snare end up sounding centered, right? You don't have to worry about phase stuff. And then your toms, will be left, right, and your crashes will be really smooth. But I want to increase that even more. Now that I got this snare stand, I want to put the, the snare stand there, put a tom on there, and only mic four drums. So I'm going to have kick snare, left tom, right tom. And I think I also want to try using this M9 as an effects pedal, like put all my effects through that guy. Ooh. This M9 into the effects return. I might be smoking crack, but I think this is gonna give me stereo effects on mono signals. What? It's working. All right, interesting bit of troubleshooting. I could not figure out what was wrong with this. The effects were working and then they weren't. Demonstrate. One signal. That's how much of the effect is it getting it. Turned up here. The effects are going in and out. The effects are just not. See? See? They're off. They're on. You either gotta know what you're doing and commit to really fixing it and getting in there, or just like, if it's working, just like, be happy. This is a whole lot of fun. Is it stereo? Now it's turned off. Yeah, I mean, it's kind of sort of fucked. I don't know. I want to change my kick drum for absolutely no reason. <laughs> I think 
I gotta use a small one. Yeah. I'm pretty sure this is cat diarrhea. I'm not even joking. That's what that is. Oh my god. The left one's a bit high, huh? Yeah. Just did a live stream and we recorded a song. Everybody contributed and some people asked for a copy of the song. There's gonna be a link to it here. It's kind of Mac DeMarco-ish. It's sometimes it turns out great, sometimes it turns out horrible, sometimes it's in between like this one. It's just, you know, it's okay. Probably could be turned into something better, but in my opinion, it's better to just pump out a bajillion ideas and that's why I'm sharing it because maybe somebody else can do something with it and great. <laughs> the next day I know I should stop but I hated this track last night I thought it was awful I listened to it again this morning and I'm like okay it's not it's actually not terrible it's just it's just okay I want to kill the toms and just like make it groovier I think that that actually getting rid of those toms improves the snare sound because yeah it does add like a stereo sound to your snare when you hit it you hear like like with but it also adds noise and I think that the sound, it sounds more direct, the snare is more direct when there's no toms, so I think it improved the mix to kill those, and I would rather add like, you know, like shakery stuff that gives it more of a groove. It's like never f***ing loud though. I think this song needs like a synth part, but I'm gonna play that on the guitar by going... I hear an enormous improvement in the mix from two things. Removing those tom uh, mics, I think the snare sounds so much better, so much more focused. Like that, I don't like that room sound. It just doesn't lend itself to a nice sounding snare for my taste. For my taste. And then let me show you what I, what I did here on the snare. Six is my snare mic. What I, did, what I did was just like lower the volume a lot, cut a lot of the mids, and boost a lot of the highs. And I boosted the lows too because I was just trying to get the best tone. I was just worried about tone this time, and I think that really helped the mix. I feel like what I did was not worry about the snare having an impact. I was more interested in having it like have a nice tone and then returning some of the highs to it so, like, so it could sit lower in the mix and it wouldn't occupy that much space. So I was just trying to carve a lot of space. A little something for the guitar players. I played this inversion on this song, which is normally would be seen as a G major 7 inversion. There's your G. 3rd, 7th, root, and 5th. It can also be used as an E minor 9, so if you just change the root, then it's like 5, 9, flat 3rd, flat 7. So there's that, that muted guitar that's doing that, and that's that's what that is. I've, I've always kind of wanted to use this chord as a 9 chord, but I never got around to it, so. That was interesting. I thought I learned something there. If you want to check out more videos about recording stuff, and miking techniques, and 388 stuff, and maybe if I end up fixing this effects thing, I'll post a video here, 
or a video here about fixing that. Check it out. Thanks so much for watching and thank you for subscribing. Appreciate it. Bye-bye.